With the GPT store around the corner, we're going to be seeing and hearing from hundreds or thousands of different developers and everyday marketers saying, check out my GPT. It's amazing. Well, we're going to be looking at some GPTs and letting you know whether they're good or not. So uh, let's dive in. So before we get started on this, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. My name is Jordan, and I'm the host of Everyday AI. This is a daily live stream podcast, free daily newsletter, helping everyday people learn and leverage generative AI. So please subscribe to this channel, like this uh, video, and let me know in the comments what you want to see more of. And also go to youreverydayai.com and sign up for that free daily newsletter. All right, so let's take a look at this GPT, and I will leave the link in the video description uh, so you can check this one out. So it's called Convert Anything. And uh, according to its developer, which is Petro Sharanio, probably didn't pronounce that right, but it is the ultimate file converter. So uh, custom GPTs, you can, with actions, you can have them do so many different things. So a lot of uh, very smart developers are creating different GPTs that can accomplish different things. So let's just go ahead and give this one a try. So you can always click the starter prompts or what I like to do is say, uh, please tell me everything convert anything can do. So we're going to start with that. And we're going to see hopefully a nice long list and a little bit more than just those four starter prompts. So again, if you're newer to chat GPT, uh, so GPT plus is required to use all of these custom GPTs. And again, the GPT store will be launching presumably this week. Uh, so you will need that $20 a month chat GPT plus account to use all of these custom GPTs. So you'll see right here the different things that convert anything can do. It can do some different file format conversions. It can do uh, batch processing, uh, zip file processing, and it's letting me know the different file formats that it can do. So PDF, doc, MP3, WAVE, MP4, JPEG, PNG, etc. So let's go ahead and do this live. So I'm going to go ahead and upload a PDF. Or I'm actually going to upload a screenshot at first. So I'm going to upload this screenshot. It is a PNG. So I'm going to say, uh, please convert this. I hate typing live. So I'm going to say, please convert this to JPEG. So this is a screenshot that I talked about earlier on today's show, talking about some of the legal muddiness of what's going on now with Midjourney's new V6. So make sure to check out that episode, uh, which I think is pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and look at the rest of what this response was. So uh, it also says direct and efficient interaction. It says my responses are solely focused on file conversion. I avoid unnecessary dialogue. I like that, right? Sometimes, uh, especially with custom GPTs, people include everything that uh, chat GPT can do within uh, when you're configuring a GPT, which is, you know, it can browse the web, it can, you know, do all these different things. So it looks like this GPT is cutting out all the fluff and really just doing what it does is uh, converting things. <clears throat> all right. So looks like the first time we had a conversion error. So uh, not sure why there was, but you can always click uh, you can always click the uh, kind of the, the code here and see what went wrong. So not sure what happened the first time, but it went through the second time and it says download the converted image. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that in and we'll take a look and see if it converted it correctly. All right, cool. So it looks like it is a JPEG. So it did a pretty good job on that. Not bad. So now let's go ahead and let's try to convert one more thing. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a larger. PDF. So let's also see how big of files uh, this can do. So let's go ahead and say, please convert this to, to JPEG images. So this is a roughly 10 page PDF. Uh, this was actually what I shared on my screen this morning uh, when it came to uh, going over the show. So uh, this one is a, a little, a little harder. I would say in terms of uh, handling something like this. So here's the actual PDF. Uh, it's a decent size file. This is uh, 9.2 megabytes, but we went over, this is what I shared on my screen live during this morning's show. So I wanna see uh, with a little bit of a larger file, uh, how well this, uh, this, this GPT does. So again, you can always uh, click the drop down arrow and you can see kind of read along live. And this is also, if, if you're interested in GPTs, whether you're using them or building them, this is a great way to better understand what's going on kind of under the hood. So the first time we got an error, which again is not, 
too far out of the norm for GPTs. You know, this technology was released just literally like 30 days ago from today. So uh, whether you're configuring them or using them, they are uh, at times a little um, unreliable and that's nothing to do with, uh, you know, this convert anything uh, developer. But the more complex the task is that the GPT is performing, the more likely that it is to probably time out. So also let me ask, let me just answer this question. Well, why would you use something like this versus using a website or just doing this all on your computer? Well, one is efficiency, right? Um, and also the, uh, the ability to still use GPT-4 um, while doing this, right? This particular convert anything, it does look like it has some of the core functionalities of GPT-4 disabled, but with other custom GPTs, um, you know, people are building in outside actions, connecting to third-party services, Zapier, different APIs. So you can kind of use a lot of the rest of the internet while still using the core functionalities of ChatGPT, specifically GPT for its default stages, which are browse with Bing, uh, you know, the vision, which is being able to read and analyze different uh, files that are uploaded, uh, as well as Dolly. So let's see how it did. All right, cool. It finally got there. So it took a couple of times, but uh, you, you know, for a free service, not bad. And I can go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and download one of these, make sure it does a good job. So this was the last page. Let's see how it did. All right, pretty good. Looks like a very small file. Um, but again, that could have something to do with the the limits, file size limits, uh, something like that. So uh, not bad, not fantastic. But uh, if you need something converted in a pinch, uh, if you can't find a site, or if you don't know how to do it on your computer, right? I'm a little bit of, uh, of a tech geek. I can do all these conversions just fine on my computer, uh, but maybe you don't. So this is one uh, GPT worth looking at. As always, never upload anything confidential, sensitive, proprietary into chat GPT, and always be aware of what third-party developers, how they're using your data, if, if any. So uh, whenever you use a new GPT. So let's just go ahead and look at this. I'm going to go to the to the main page again. Um, you can always look up more information about the developer um, and, and just to see specifically how they may be using any data that you upload. It's always important to keep that in mind. All right. I hope this is helpful. If so, please go to youreverydayai.com, sign up for that free daily newsletter, and we'll see you back for another AI in five. Thanks, y'all.